it's also, you know, working together as well. So I'm glad that that... The great thing that I liked about Furniture Bank was um, it was practical. It was just so practical. So it started off with me putting out a post on Facebook and somebody mentioned the Furniture Bank. I looked them up, I contacted them and Kat immediately responded and was very positive about the whole idea. Um, Furniture Bank really liked the idea of basically getting furniture, but also the idea of working collaboratively with the students as well. The We Can Build It Together assignment is one where students will try and put together flat pack furniture. The challenge, of course, is they're going to have a time limit and one person's going to build it and one person's going to have the instructions. Once they've finished the furniture, um, we will store it and then we will donate it to Furniture Bank. And Furniture Bank will come and they'll pick it up and hopefully it will go to a good home. Hopefully it will go to their warehouse and then it will go to a family that really needs it. Maybe as part of a set, maybe to furnish somebody's bedroom. Hello, my name is Erwin Sebastian. My name is Ryan and we're here at Centennial College and we're here to pick up a night table which is being donated to the Furniture Bank. Uh, typically our days start off with uh, a warehouse and we get our jobs. So from there we go on to our uh, locations to pick up furniture. When we arrive we, we're not entirely sure exactly what we're picking up. We have an idea. It could be a sofa, it could be an armchair, a bookshelf, but it's Erwin and I's job to determine if it's suitable for our clients and if it's in good condition to be donated. I started off the uh, furniture bank about three years ago. I like the community aspect of it. Um, there's a feeling of um, a unity and giving back out to the community. And I, I like that about furniture bank. Uh, for myself, I started about two years ago and originally it was just a, a job that I needed. I need to have money income because I have a family, but I stuck around for so long because of how the work is and what we do for the community outside of just doing the regular moving type job. The big factor for me to stick around is that gratification that I know for a fact that I'm making a change in the community and I'm not just moving furniture or just taking things off people's hands for no apparent reason. My name is Tammy Peddle. I am Director of Development here at Furniture Bank. And Furniture Bank is a registered charity and social enterprise that redistributes furniture uh, across the city to families and individuals in need. So Furniture Bank came to be as an idea sparked back in 1989. So our founder, Sister Anne Shank, used to work for a refugee center in Scarborough and there was a day where she was invited by a family for dinner over to their home. So Sister Anne actually accepted that invite and went uh, to this family's home. And upon arrival, uh, she walked into a very empty space. The mother and the four children had prepared dinner. However, they were sitting on the floor and she had a couple of pots there was a couple of plates, only a few ut utensils, but there was no furniture in that apartment. But Sister Anne, to herself, thought, how did this woman cook dinner with just these few things? I wouldn't be able to cook dinner for one person. How did she manage to cook dinner for all of us? And when she left that day, she walked out of the apartment and out on the street was a sofa. And the idea came to her. There's good furniture out there that people no longer need. How can I get that new, that furniture into the hands of those who need it? And that became the idea of Furniture Bank. So every day Furniture Bank is 
going to homes to remove furniture and four trucks or five trucks are coming back here daily full of furniture as you can see here so this furniture will be received and then put out onto the showroom floor so let's head on back this way arrives at Furniture Bank, there's a bunch of receiving processes that happen. We make sure that furniture is intact and able to get out onto our showroom floor so we're able to successfully redistribute that furniture to a family in need. We ensure that there's no pests, nothing's broken, and it's in good, clean condition. So once the furniture arrives in our showroom, what happens is it gets placed and on a daily basis, we have volunteers essentially that come in every morning and they're building that home for the families that need the furniture. So we're given a list of items that a family would need from the agencies that we work with. And those volunteers will come out onto the showroom floor and essentially they're building that home for the families. Pre-COVID days when we had our families coming into Furniture Bank, you could see that there was smiles on their face. Uh, I think my favorite moments are when children come with their moms and they would come out to the showroom floor and they would see a sofa that they really liked and they would jump down on the sofa and they'd snuggle in and just be like, mom, can we get this one? And they were so happy that they'd be having that piece of furniture at home so they could get cozy and watch TV or have a nap and just be comfortable and come together as a family. And then we've had moments, uh, there was one individual in particular, uh, he was homeless in the city of Toronto for 15 years. And when he came to Furniture Bank, uh, one of our volunteers had a really hard time getting him to select furniture and he said to her, I really only need a chair and that will, that'll be enough for me. And she said, but you're, you can choose whatever you want here. And he was overwhelmed to the point that he broke down in tears, that people were here and able to help him and want to help him and give him a dignified and comfortable home. And that day brought a tear, I think, to all our eyes. And for all of our clients, I, we just, we wanna make sure that they're comfortable and that they know that there's a place for them to receive the help and receive the things they need. So come on, I'm gonna show you uh, the piece that Centennial College donated and uh, it's gonna be on its way to a family in need in a few short days. So here's the piece right here, and it's gonna make its way into a new home very soon. So thank you, Centennial College. Um, and today, here we are in 2021, uh, operating 10 trucks across the city, helping other furniture banks across the country start up. Uh, and it wouldn't have been without that first idea from Sister Anne. Unfortunately, in 2021, we lost Sister Anne Shank. And it's really emotional uh, as she was a mentor to me. She was an inspiration to all of us here at the organization. She would walk into a room and you could feel her. She just lit up the room and she just wanted to care for everybody. And she believed that everybody needed the, needed to have a dignified, furnished home because we all deserve that and today every employee at Furniture Bank truly believes in that mission and we are here to carry on her dream her mission and we won't stop because we know that there are thousands of people across Toronto and across our country that need our support